What is masculinity? People seem to know it when they see it. They sense it. They react to it. They evaluate it. But if you ask most men to define masculinity, you get a lot of confused and conflicting answers. In many cases, you'll get a lecture about morality, about what a real man should do, about what he shouldn't do, about what he should wear, how he should behave. The answers and the rules, they change from social class to social class and from culture to culture. So much so, in fact, that many people believe masculinity doesn't mean anything at all, that it's just a social construct. And to support their point, they tend to study and write about different groups of men and their different ideas about masculinity. When I wrote The Way of Men, I wanted to look at those different groups of men and their different ideas about masculinity, and I wanted to see what those ideas actually had in common. And I wanted to figure out why those common values have always been so important to men. If you asked most men throughout history and around the world for a list of qualities that they'd associate with masculinity, the vast majority of them would agree that a man should be strong, courageous, competent, and honorable. Those are what I call the four tactical virtues, strength, courage, mastery, and honor. They are the qualities that men would want from each other, that they would need from each other that they would demand from each other in a survival scenario. Just imagine that the building you're in right now is surrounded by zombies. Aren't those the qualities you'd want in the men who are on your side? It's pretty straightforward, like picking a sports team. Now, strength, courage, mastery, and honor, they're not exclusive to men, but it has always been more important for men to have those qualities. We evolved in a far more dangerous world. For tens of thousands of years, it was our job, the first job of men, to separate us from them, from the outside world, from nature, from danger, from other men, to protect the perimeter of our tribe, and if necessary, to go out and take the things our tribe needed or the things that they wanted. Biologists write a lot about sexual selection, about how women select men and how men select women. But masculinity is at least as much about how men select each other. It's about men trying to prove themselves to each other. It's about men trying to prove that they belong on the team. Humans have always been social animals. They survived and evolved in groups with clear sex roles, much like chimpanzees, who also hunt and fight and even make war. It's always been the job of men to hunt, to fight, to protect the perimeter. Men who weren't strong enough, courageous enough, competent enough, men who didn't care what other men thought of them. Men who, for whatever reason, were unwilling or unable to carry their own weight men who just didn't make the team. Well, it's reasonable to assume that they either ended up with the women and children and became a burden, or they were just out of the tribe, alone, on their own, in a far more dangerous world. They probably died. And when you're dead, your genes don't make it to the next round. The men who were able to prove to each other that they were strong, courageous, competent, and honorable, the men who made the team, they had a much better chance of having their genes make it to the next round. They made us who we are. Now, today, very few of us have to hunt or fight or protect the perimeter. We barely have to get out of bed. But that doesn't erase tens of thousands of years of evolutionary history. It doesn't erase our natural desire to be men, to prove 
strength, courage, mastery, or honor. Any more than realizing that the world really doesn't need that many more children makes us want to stop having sex. It's a natural drive, and it's part of who we are. One of the reasons the topic of masculinity has always been so confusing is that people in power have always exploited the natural desire of men to be seen as masculine. They use the idea of masculinity to manipulate men, to get them to sign on to their own agenda. Today, people who don't want men to act like men are doing the exact same thing. They say that men are insecure, that they're afraid of women, that they're afraid of change. This is just another trick, another way to say that men who don't do as they're told are weak, inept, or cowards. Feminists and many world leaders and organizations say that we should redefine masculinity. They want masculinity to mean whatever they say it should mean, or almost nothing at all. They say that we shouldn't pressure men to be strong or courageous anymore, because we don't need them to be strong or courageous anymore. Whether or not you agree with that comes down to a question of philosophy. What kind of men would you rather have? What kind of man would you rather be? Would you rather be strong, courageous, competent, and honorable? Or would you rather be surrounded by men who are weak, cowardly, inept, careless, men who don't even care about being men? Those are two different ways, two different futures for men. The future you choose for yourself for the men around you, for your sons. The future you choose will ultimately determine the way of men.